Hi, my name is Brady Robinette. FC Traffic Control, a local company here in Lubbock, Texas, hooked me up with this helmet. It's the Defender Safety Helmet. Sometime back, they selected this helmet as opposed to the traditional hard hat for their crew members working on the roadway. And I want to applaud them for their efforts to improve safety because there's no doubt this helmet is significantly safer when working on the roadway than this helmet. And with some of the experiences and knowledge that I have, I want to, in this video, look at some of the additional pros and cons of this helmet. So y'all stick around. Some of the things I like about this helmet is it has a multi-point chin strap. It has ventilation that can be opened or closed. It has optional eye protection that can be purchased with the helmet. And this helmet is can be purchased at a pretty reasonable price. It's kind of hard to see, but that black area up in there is foam. And foam is what we need to protect our head from any kind of impact like we'd uh, sustain on the roadway. And it has foam all on the top, on the front, in the back, and to some degree on the sides. It also has a nape adjustment here, so it's considered a one-size-fits-all or one-size-fits-most helmet. And it's also lightweight. I don't have the specific weight of it, but it's definitely not a heavy he helmet, and it's also comfortable to wear. Most every helmet on the market meets some kind of helmet standard. Of all the helmet standards on the market today, I think one could argue that the motorcycle helmet standards most closely mirror the type of protection an emergency responder would need when working on the roadway. Snail Foundation is a prominent standards organization that writes a motorcycle helmet standard. In their documentation, they list four critical criteria that affect a helmet's protective properties. One of those four criteria is positional stability or the ability for the helmet to stay on the head when it's needed most. I'm gonna test this helmet and a couple other helmets for their positional stability, also known as a roll-off test. In this test, I'm dropping a 10 kilogram weight from a height of approximately 175 millimeters, and that drop weight's applying pressure to the back of the helmet to test its positional stability. I'm testing the Defender safety helmet here, and you can see it clearly came off, which would be, definitely be a failure. In this test, I'm testing a search and rescue style helmet, and you can see it has really good positional stability. To properly evaluate this helmet, I want to talk about some of the things that I don't like or don't prefer about it. And one is it has a webbing suspension system in it. This webbing suspension system, the same one found in traditional hard hats and even structural firefighting helmets are designed for top-down impact. They are not designed to provide impact to the side of the head if we got impacted on the side of the head. What we would want is foam. And while earlier I did mention this helmet has foam and that's good, it's fairly thin. So right there, that's somewhere around a half inch thick. On the side of the helmet, it's, it's harder to see, but it's substantially thinner down in there. We would want foam to come up to the shell edge all the way around from the front to the back and both sides, like mounted motorcycle helmets, skateboarding helmets, or uh, even bicycle helmets. The foam here on the side stops pretty high. We would want that foam, like I mentioned, to come all the way up to the side here and provide as much protection to the side of the head as possible. Another thing this helmet has that I don't prefer is a three-point chin strap. So it's attached at one point on the back of the helmet. Then each attachment point on the side would make an attachment point two and three. In my opinion, a four-point chin strap, a true four-point chin strap is more ideal. It provides better positional stability or the ability to keep the helmet on the head. This helmet's headband is clipped to the helmet via different, a couple, uh, several different points. And this helmet is after I performed that roll-off test, so it's probably unclipping easier than it does a brand new helmet, but that headband can unclip. And so you know, that would be ideal for cleaning the headband or uh, replacing it, but it's not ideal when that headband can, can pop out. It kind of lends to uh, positional stability issues, in my opinion. Next up, I'm gonna test a bicycle helmet. This bicycle helmet just happens to have a three-point chin strap similar to the one found in the Defender helmet. As we can see, it stays on the head. It has a good positional stability. So the question is, is why was this bicycle helmet able to stay on with the three-point chin strap when the Defender helmet wasn't? And I'm by no means an expert in this area, but the bicycle helmet at this point right here where it uh, goes from the side leg of the chin strap to the back leg, this point right here, 
it allows no movement. It's securely attached right there. This helmet, it can pass through. And so when I put this head form or this helmet on the head form and manually manipulated it, it appeared that the slack that it was pulling right here, and it can also pass slack via the three point attachment back there was just enough to get the back of the helmet up enough so it could pull the helmet off the head form. On the manufacturer's website, it lists EN397. EN397 is an industrial helmet standard and it calls for a breakaway chin strap. That chin strap is called to break away at approximately 30 to 50 pounds of pressure. And the thought is in an industrial setting, if your helmet snags on a piece of equipment, that the chin strap would break and you'd able to free yourself before you're uh, drug head first into that piece of industrial equipment. Another one of Snell's four critical elements affecting a helmet's protective properties is retention system strength. And it says whether the chin straps are sufficiently strong to hold the helmet throughout a head impact. So if we're talking about a roadway helmet here, we would want our helmet's chin strap to be as strong as possible and we would not want a breakaway chin strap. I'm not sure where this helmet is designed to break away as per EN397. It could be at this buckle where it separates in between, in between the 30 and 50 pounds of pressure or I have the headband unattached here so we can see up in there, but the chin strap is attached via this plastic tip right here and that could also be where it's designed to break away. So to finish this review on the Defender Safety Helmet, there's no doubt this helmet is safer than a traditional hard hat when working on the roadway. These helmets have no chance of staying on the head and they don't have any foam on the inside that we need to protect our head in the event of an impact. As a firefighter, I've historically worn a structural firefighting helmet when I'm out on the roadway. These helmets have horrible positional stability they just have a two point chin strap. They sit high on the head and they're heavy and they just really don't have any chance of staying on the head either. They have a webbing suspension system on the inside and they lack any foam like a motorcycle helmet does that we need to protect our head. So if I had my choice of what helmet to wear out of this helmet, this helmet, or this helmet, there's no doubt that I would select this helmet. It has a more significant chin strap and it at least has some foam on the inside to provide protection from uh, impact. At Lubbock Fire Rescue, we selected this helmet to wear on the roadway. It has a true four-point chin strap. It has uh, a decent amount of foam on the inside, and it's a slim profile. It allowed uh, us as firefighters to do the type of task we need, like get in a cramped uh, compartment of a wreck vehicle to provide patient care. But you know, if your organization is considering a roadway helmet, you know, do your own research. Look at all the helmets out there. There's a ton of helmets out there. There's helmets out there that would even provide more impact protection than this, like a motorcycle helmet. Uh, so look at them, uh, dig into the details of the standards they meet, make sure it doesn't have a breakaway chin strap and select the helmet that's gonna provide the most protection for you and your crew members working on the roadway while still allowing you to keep the helmet on your head throughout the duration of that event. As a disclaimer, I just wanted to say I don't have any kind of professional training in helmets or helmet safety, and everything expressed here today was that of my opinion, and it's just from the research that I personally performed to determine what helmet I would want on my head when I work on the roadway as an emergency responder.